Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unarmored Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Mario P. Fields, and today's guest is Kiana Lauren. She's amazing. I had a chance to meet her. It seems like I met her 28 years ago, but uh, just full of excitement and energy. Y'all think I'm motivated, man. You got it. <laughs> yeah, you guys got to talk to Kiana. Kiana, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mario. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm actually loving that it's coming in on the 31st as we close 2021. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, this is, I mean, we'll air this episode in 2022, but, uh, but no, nah, yeah. I mean, what a blessing new year's Eve, get to talk to Kiana right before we go down and do some karaoke in the fields house. <laughs> I love it. I want to be invited next year for that. And you invite is already sent virtually. You got it. All you got to do is accept it. But, uh, Hey, can you tell the listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself, Kiana? Absolutely. Um, again, thank you for having me. And uh, I have kind of a funky past, maybe. I uh, was in corporate America for a little while, about, oh, gosh, I don't know, 12, 13 years. I was in strategic finance for economic development projects, all the infrastructure you, you don't see that right. you just use and you're grateful for. I helped get public funding, um, helped our clients set up infrastructure, charging facilities, utilities, all sorts of good stuff. Um, I really loved the human side of that, however, and after... After a nice uh, little chunk of a career, I quit and moved on. And now I'm in the coaching leadership development space. I have a couple little side hustles. I start some other businesses really that are all about bringing people together in neat ways so that they can really learn about each other, grow and um, have a good time. Yeah. And that, that's important. I mean, the last time <laughs> I checked, there was about 7.8 billion humans on earth. So you talking about getting to know each other. A lot more. I, I think I don't think that challenge will ever end. So you're in a good space. But let hey, let's jump right into the topic. Unarmor talk. Right. You you talked about your your desire and love for human development and you know helping human beings, right? Helping professionals develop in a positive way, maybe maximize their potential. But Kiana wasn't always like this. I, I want to say when you were younger, when you looked in the mirror, you weren't happy with you. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, and, and this is not something that I that I talk a lot about. And uh, it was funny when you and I talked about doing this, um, when you asked me what's something that people don't know. I mean, this was the first thing that, that came to mind. So I was, let's see, probably between my junior and senior years of high school. Um, and I had my mom, who I didn't live with, I actually grew up with my aunt and my uncle. I actually, so let me tell you a little bit of backstory here. Wow. My parents are um, kind of recovering hippies, if you will. I was actually born, uh, we were living in a teepee in Washington state. I was born in a cabin without any, like I think there was running water in the cabin because the teepee didn't have any. My dad actually delivered me. My mom's uh, midwife was late coming up the mountain. <laughs> so that's just kind of wow. how I came into this world. Um, and I've, they're just, they're incredible humans. They've taught me a lot about, um, being transformational and growing and really kind of looking inside very spiritual. And, and after middle school and high school, I lived with my aunt and my uncle who kind of took me in. Um, there wasn't a lot of good schooling opportunities in Hawaii, which is where I was living at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to California with my aunt and my uncle and they are this incredible responsible, um, more conservative, very structured, both of them worked and taught me this whole other side of being an adult. And so I have this kind of interesting blend between this hippie, um, more spiritual, and then this more realistic medical conservative. And, I, and I've, I've kind of created this bridge between the two. And I think that's how I exist in the world. So yeah, it, had, it, it makes sense why you got so many soft skills, you call them human and soft skills. That's that's diverse. I mean, you got you started off in a diverse GI experience. So now I know what the secret secret is for for your success, Kiana. But no, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean it's it's it actually a lot of people are like, oh, okay, it makes sense. my name used to be Rising Moon, for example, like when I right. my middle name was Rising Moon. So, um, in uh, so it was my senior year. My mom, who was uh, living not with me, was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I guess it was terminal. I didn't know officially at the time, but she was really, really, really sick. And I, again, looking back, it's easy to look at all of these other pieces. I was graduating high school. 
Um, I was in theater. I went to a high school, a college prep high school where it was really cool to be in theater. We, we didn't have a football team, but we had like this incredible arts department. And um, I just kind of fell into being on stage and really caring about what I looked like. Yeah. Um, I also played sports. And again, when you're running around in a sports bra and you want to be strong, but you also want to look great. So I um, found a way to, <laughs> I, I mean, again, yeah. looking back, I just, I hit it, right? So I found a way that I could appear that I was healthy. I would eat, but then I would go and purge. So I've had an eating disorder since my, since my senior year of high school. And um, it went on for a while. And I remember at one point in high school, some of my friends noticed that something was going on and they kind of called me out, but I found a way. I was really good at storytelling and I was really good at um, telling myself that things were okay when they weren't. And, and even, I mean, it, it went on for at least a year. And at some point before I went to college, I was in therapy and, um, my parents had found out, I mean, it's not one of those things like you can't, this is, I don't know how gross I can be on here, but no, growing up, um, every, every day and all the day, you know, throughout the day is, is, not too difficult or it's not too easy to hide and people can, you know, you go, it's just like, you, you can figure it out. So my parents figured it out. Uh, or, and when I say my parents, they were my aunt, my uncle, and they put me in, in therapy. And, um, I'm even noticing like talking about it. I still get like anxious and yeah. start sweating. So if I'm moving around a little bit, <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I, I just, <laughs> you know, and it's just, to, just listening to you, you know, talk about, you know, here it is, you're in theater, you're, you're an athlete and, and now all of a sudden, you know, instead of working out more or instead of going, you know what, I have, you know, I have, I don't have skinny legs, right? I have thick legs or whatever, uh, or my abs. I don't have a six pack. You know, you're like Mario Fields. I have a negative six pack. I mean, I don't know, but, 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 but you, your choice was, you know what, I, I'm going to make myself vomit. I'm going to eat and then, and then vomit the food so I can stay what slim and, 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 and what emotions, you, you know, what were some of the emotions as you talked about, you got into therapy, what were you dealing with emotionally as a senior and beyond with this? I wanted attention. <clears throat> I mean, that's always been, uh, I wanted to look good. I thought that how I presented out here wow. was everything. Mm. And, um, and it, you know, and I didn't stop working out. I, I think I worked out a lot. And then in binge eight, because that fed something for me, uh, well, you know, no right. pun intended. Um, <laughs> but I think a lot of it was, um, and I didn't, again, not realizing this until now as an adult, but there is, um, I am ADHD. And so dopamine isn't like, doesn't process normally in my brain. Right. And so, or my body doesn't, doesn't create it and process it. Like, it's not the same as a neurotypical and so eating, overeating, there's, there's a lack of executive function, uh, impulse control, and then that feeling of like feeling good when I'm eating. Um, I mean, here, I'll give you an example. I used to go to Jack in the Box and order like three or four things, which is like a fast food restaurant on the West Coast. Three or four things from the menu, eat them all, and then go to the bathroom and throw up. So it was like, I got the dopamine hit, but then I didn't have any of the lasting effects. So I thought. <laughs> right. Um, the food. Um, I ended up. I, and I'm still dealing with a slew of health issues, including an uh, underactive thyroid and some other things that, again, and, and the story continues, but um, as an adult, because of that bulimia. But I think um, it, 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 you hear it all the time. It was a control thing, right? Things were out of control in my life. Um, my mom was sick. I didn't live with her. I was going to college actually across the country. So I was going to be away from family. And um, and I think all my life, my body and my weight had gone done this, done this, this uh, up and down kind of yeah train. And um, was there was there any time, you know, what you know, was there any time during this, you know, this struggle that someone had said something to you that made it worse, right? Someone made a comment about your physique, your body. Um, that made you sink even lower. I use a cliche sink, right? But made you even worse. Did that happen? Not so much. Like, it, you know, it, 
I think it was, I saw other things around me and I thought like what, what, what I was supposed to look like. Ah. And I am, I'm a, I am a more voluptuous person. I am a half Italian, like my grand, like if we just have. Curly- and ladies and gentlemen, y'all can use that word, by the way. That's, that's, that's an accurate word. Uh, I like how you put that out. Voluptuous. <laughs> yeah. And, and still to this day, I mean, it, it, so I think that I had this idea that I was supposed to be small and little. And of course in high school, like, you know, and this was back before. I'm trying to think if there was social media. Probably not. Let's see. I graduated in 2000. So it was like maybe I didn't join Facebook until later. I was late to that party. But yeah, anyway. We, yeah, yeah, we joined Facebook. I think it was last week. Wasn't it, Keanu? You joined Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Tell people that. Like, gosh, not with the times. No, but I remember when I joined it, people were like, welcome to the world, Keanu. Um, but no, so, I, you know, and, it, and the crazy part, Mario, is that I thought that I had dealt with it like back then, right? So I graduate, I go to therapy, I talk about needing attention, I talk about what's happening with my mom, I, you know, I talk about wanting to go into college and being healthy. And then I go to college and um, I stop throwing up, but I start drinking, (laughs) right? So I took one uh, distraction, avoidance, however you want to look at it, control piece, and turned it into something else. I wasn't a big drinker in high school. It wasn't, that wasn't like a big thing right. um, in private school. It's, you know, we were good. We're, we're, and I do that in quotes, we're good. Um, but in college, I, I had a great time. In fact, I almost didn't graduate my freshman year. I had to take a bunch of courses uh, at, a, at a, a community college in the summer in between because I had partied all freshman year. So eventually I get my stuff together, right? Let's fast forward. I get out of college. I think I've got it all figured out. I, you know, there were some other things in college where I went down some paths. I feel like I probably could have ended up um, in a lot of different spaces uh, had my addiction to all of the things that weren't serving me. Had the, I didn't have the support of family and friends and right. really being able to recognize like, okay, stuff's got to change. Yeah. So I think I had what appeared to be a very successful life. I, you know, I got a job right out of college. I got my MBA. I was on, you know, this great path. I had a great mentors and all of the stuff. I ended up getting married. Um, I moved to, from Pennsylvania to, to Ohio, had a couple children. All of everything was great. And then my marriage went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> So enter, enter, uh, bulimia 2.0. And right. I, wow. so, so, I so this okay. thing that you've been struggling with, maybe we'll just say is your senior year. Yeah. And, 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 and then you go through college and then things happen, right? You, you, you know, some good and bad things. We'll just say things happen while living. You think you went through therapy. You think you get, you believe you have this thing under control. Right. Then relationship falls apart. And now this thing resurfaces. And I, I want to say you're, you were what, mid, late 20s, mid 30s, maybe? No. So that was uh, mid to late 30s. Wow. Yeah. It was so it had been many, many years. I mean, that mm-hmm. was probably, I think, 2017, I would say, right around 2017, 18. And um, uh, it wasn't just my marriage. Like there were so many things. And so here's the crazy part, right? I had convinced myself that I didn't have an eating disorder anymore. Now I was healthy. I was, um, according according to your standards. (laughs) Right. Right. And I was, I had, uh, I got on a, a program, lost a ton of weight because I was eating like 600 calories a day, right. Convincing myself that this was healthy while also working out. So I wasn't, I, there's two times of bulimia, two types of bulimia. There's the one where you're actually throwing up and then there's like exercise bulimia where you're over-exercising and um, so you may not be like throwing up, but you're, you know, eating very little, over-exercising right. and telling yourself, telling myself, I'll stop saying you philosophically, but me telling myself that this was healthy. Like I would do three hours of workout. I remember I would go to a peer bar class, I'd go to a spin class, and then I would go run five, a quick five miles, because that was normal. Wow. So, and it was, it was probably a combination of what was happening in my marriage and a combination of what was happening in my job. Um, I think, and, and just in general in my life, like I was, I was not okay. I was not happy yeah. with myself. And this was how I appeared healthy and okay. And wow. so, so at what point, 
did you just wake up right or not? But at what point did you look in the mirror and you said, and you and you you said, you know what? I am like this because I was born this way, and I'm going to accept that this is how my body is, this is how I am, and and I'm going to stop emotionally reacting to this stuff. I'm going to accept this, and then this is what I'm going to do to get comfortable with who I really am, right? When did that happen? You know, I'm laughing um, a little bit because it probably, probably in the last six months. Wow. I, you know, it's one of those things where if I look at what I looked like in high school and, and look back, I would kill to look like that, right? Same with college, same with in my 20s. But every time I was never happy, even when I lost all that weight in my mid thirties, cause I, you know, I did that program and then I was intermittent fasting. I mean, I had four hour eating windows five days a week. The other two days of the week, I didn't eat. I thought it was healthy for your cells to fast for 48 hours. So, and people would ask me at work, like, oh, is today an eating day? Like, and it was, it was just, <laughs> I had convinced myself. And then if I overate because I was hungry or depressed or upset, I would go in the pantry. I'd eat a whole box of protein bars, but they were basically like candy bars. And then I would feel sick to my stomach. So I would throw up and then go for a run. And, you know, again, keep fast forwarding. I got out of a job that was actually really toxic. Um, I needed to end the career anyway. I started to lean into the stuff that I really loved and found a way to kind of provide that to the world. Um, and even over the last couple of years, like I didn't obviously anticipate the pandemic. So I had this big plan and then I had kids at home that I needed to be there for. So right. And I was still through all of this, I went up and down. I like lost 30 pounds, put it right back on, like within a year. And today, today, as I talk to you, I am not where I thought I was going to be help, like weight, weight, just weight wise. Let's just put weight wise. And I work out every day. I go to a, a boot camp, um, but I don't work out for three hours. Uh, right. I don't, I, I, I do it in a way that feels healthy. And I, just started to love on myself. Right. Yeah. Like I never was happy with who I was or what I looked like. And my body wasn't, wasn't working right. My thyroid was messed up. I'm doing all of these things. I eat healthy. I work out. Why am I not thinner? Blah, 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 blah. And I think my body felt so in stress all the time. And trainers would tell me this, like, don't get me wrong. It's not that the people around me weren't telling me. I just couldn't hear them because I had my story of what this was and why something was wrong with me. And in the last six months, I just kind of like threw everything up in the air and said, okay, I'm just going to love on myself. And when I work out, I actually talk about how strong my body is in my brain. I'm like, wow, it's incredible yeah. that I can bench press or like chest press this much weight. It's incredible that I'm here and I can balance and I'm flexible and all of these things. Like I'm actually giving my body positive love, which again, it sounds so cliche, like, oh, just well, love yourself. Well, it's so much harder to actually do and live than anybody. I mean, people well, that I feel like have gone through this, they understand that. Yeah, well, no, this is perfect, Kiana. You know, I won't say perfect. This is, this is accurate. I mean, the podcast is exactly what you're talking about. It's to talk about emotions and what happens when you emotionally respond without much thinking. And now what you're talking about is you just change your thought process in the last six months where where now you think through things, you develop your belief system through thinking and through through right empirical accurate stuff where now it's even though it sounds cliche, but it's accurate thinking where now you're not going to the gym going, man, look at Mark, look at Maria. She's right. she's ripped and she looks like she's 68. Now you're now you're going, oh, look at Kiana. That's yeah. right. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. And, uh, it's um oh, I had something I was gonna say and I lost it, but um no, that's you know, cool. Brain works. <laughs> no, but, but I, I think a little coffee. Yeah, right. I already drink it. I finish it. It's all gone, Mario. I'll, I'll drink it, I'll drink it for you. Yeah, perfect. Um I uh I, I, it's been probably over 
a year since I've had like the urge or the thought, like I used to have it all the time where something would be stressful and I would just say, okay, let me just go throw up. Cause that'll make me feel better. Yeah. And it wasn't even like, I can't even say like, oh, I felt sick to my stomach. It wasn't like a nerve thing like that. It was just, that was a way for me to say, okay, here's something I can do. It's going to equal this. But um, realizing what I was doing to myself um, physically and emotionally, being able to, to kind of step away from that. Um, so I don't have those urges anymore. And I, I did it a, again, a little non-traditionally. I mean, I ran a marathon in 2019. I ran the Pittsburgh Marathon. And uh, you have to be healthy in order to do that, right? You can't be unhealthy. But I didn't do, I wasn't eating those like sugar packs. I had carried around little things of nut butter. So I did, I, my body was fat adjusted or whatever. I, you know, I'm not even going to say keto because it's not keto, but my body was running on that. And at that point I was good, but it still, it still wasn't. I take on physical feats. And I take on those kinds of things to challenge myself and give, again, it's a control thing. If I can do this, then I can handle all of the other things that life yeah. brings at me, right? If I can, and I can do it in the non-traditional way. Like I didn't do the typical training. I didn't do all, well, granted, it took me five hours. So, you know, I'll just put that disclaimer out hey, there. You did, but you did it. <laughs> but I did it and I felt great afterwards. I was walking. I baked cookies with my kids later that afternoon. Like people are like, oh, you have to just like, you know, sit around and do nothing. I'm like, oh, it's fine. Um, yeah. But really the the big piece is there's this gap in our um integrity there is this gap in what we say we are like outwardly i'm working with leaders on being a good oh. human and living with integrity and being real and authentic and and raw and i couldn't even do that i wasn't living in integrity and um i think that's why i said just even in the last 6 months and even being able to talk about this, um, I'm yeah. not, I'm not done. Like the journey's not over. R right. Right. You no. Know, and I still, I still no. am every day, I, I guess, kind of like recovering addicts or, you know, again, when there's something that is always there every day, you're still working on it and towards it. And you have to consciously make the decision right. to be healthy. And I put that in quotes for me, healthy is not binge eating, is listening to my body, is actually nice. loving on myself instead of looking in the mirror and being like, oh, my butt's so big, or these <laughs> clothes that I'm keeping in my closet don't fit me. Yeah, because they, you know, fit you when you weren't healthy. <laughs> right. No, that's, so, no, that's, no, I truly appreciate it. And then for you to just remove the armor, right? It's unarmored talk, you know, for you to, to, to have the courage to remove the armor, remove your armor, uh, to talk about something you don't normally talk about. And I like how you talked about how here you are coaching and teaching people how to live a life of integrity. And then you do self-reflection and realize I'm not even living a life of integrity, but you chose to change. It was, it was a choice. And, and look at you today, Kiana, and I truly um, appreciate you. If you had any last remarks or advice to give our listeners and viewers, what would you tell them? Um, don't let anybody tell you they have it figured out because even the people that appear to maybe have it all figured out don't. And, um, I would tell people that this is, it's forever going to be something that our society is dealing with. Um, and I, you know, you and I talked about this, there's a change that's happening in the world where people are being more focused on body positivity. And that's essentially like, just love on yourself, just love on yourself because, you know, 10 years from now, you're not going to look the same way you do. I mean, now. look at my hair. <laughs> and we don't want to be the same, right? We don't want to be the same 10 years from now as what we are now. It's, you know, like change is great, but just... And it, again, it feels so, so cliche. And so hopefully people aren't upset about this, but yes, just love on yourself and actually say that out loud. I like that. La ladies and gentlemen, you heard from, Ke from Kiana. I mean, you know, you can't, you got to look in the mirror and start to love you first before you can, you know, love others around you and, yeah. um, and accept who you are, accept 
this is you and embrace aging. I mean, like Kiana said, I mean, I, I, I used to love my hair. It's gone and, um, and I, I'm shrinking. But, but, but thank God for virtual platforms. I look pretty tall, according to Kiana. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> truly, truly appreciate you guys listening. And if you're on YouTube viewing, if you want to link up professionally with Kiana, Kiana, well, how can they find you? Yeah, I'd say LinkedIn is probably the easiest place if you're on there. Otherwise, I mean, you can Google me and I've got uh, websites out there. So, yeah, so there's not a whole lot of Kiana Lorenz in the world. <laughs> She's got good SEOs, right? Search engine optimization going on. But ladies and gentlemen, you guys know the deal. God bless you. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you, Mario. No, you're welcome. Mm -hmm.